Hey, I'm Ross and welcome to Biker Talk. If you haven't done so already, make sure you click on that subscribe button. The Royal Enfield Interceptor is a bike that is the undisputed king of the mid-capacity market. It's a bike with old school good looks and a simple but very modern 650cc twin cylinder engine. In this episode, I head out to Bathurst in the central west of New South Wales to chat with Paul about his modern classic. My name's Paul and I've been riding for nearly 60 years. My father was John Rasmussen, known to everybody as Happy Jack. I started when we were living at uh, on Eastern Valley Way at Willoughby. Dad had a AMC Sunbeam motorcycle sitting in the garage at the back. I used to go out there and sit on it as a little tiny kid, going broom broom. And then by the time, uh, probably about five or six, Dad actually got the interest back in the bikes and he decided to try and start it. He started it and uh, he rode it around because we had a fairly large yard and he'd pull up beside the ramp and uh, I, I got on the bike and Dad just laughed. He stopped laughing very quickly because the motor bike was still running when I gave it a rev and dropped it into gear and rode it around the yard. Things to come. <laughs> First bike I ever owned was a Bridgestone 90. The same as the Bridgestone Tire Company. It was a little 90cc single thing. Blue and chrome, that's right. Dad laughed at it because I had to pre-mix the two-stroke and everything for it. It was an absolute little rocket ship. It performed like a probably a 125. Well, I had another, another Bridgestone, a 175. That was the, the actual forerunner of the 250 Yam racing Yamahas. Yamaha bought Bridgestone out and said, don't make any more motorcycles, make tyres for us. The only other brand new motorcycle I've ever bought in my life, a CB250 Honda, a green one. <laughs> I had that for a long time, that thing. Uh, I bought the Royal Enfield because it was the closest thing I could get to something that was a nice, simple, twin cylinder engine. <laughs> The last bike I had just before that was an SV650 and it drove me nuts. You had to be a microsurgeon to work on it. So yeah, I got that and I went out and did a test ride. I said, I like this, it's nice, it's pretty solid in the field. It felt like stepping back onto my ES2 Norton. And for me, that I said, oh geez, this is right. And for me, it was the change over to ABS brakes as well. I suppose it's like me. Uh, I'm getting older, so I don't need anything as powerful as I have had. Don't need these monstrous, you know, 100 horsepower things. Yeah, it's like the SV650 that I had, the Suzuki. Um, it's supposed to put out 50 something. I was getting 72 out of it. And I could just pop the wheel in the air anywhere I wanted at any time and uh, it just absolutely flew. But I, I, I was looking at it and said, but I don't ride it that hard. I, I rode it hard a couple of times to try and clean its throats out, but it just wasn't for me. And uh, I think actually the young bloke who's got it now has lost his license. <laughs> <laughs> I liked this one and the black and red version. I liked both. I walked into the shop down there at Penrith. That one was sitting in the driveway. I said, have you got a demonstrator? And he said, yes, that one. I said, okay, I'll take it. I looked at the clock, I said, it's got 70 odd kilometers on it. He said, yeah, that's all it's done. Took it for a ride around Penrith there, came back and uh, <laughs> said to him, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> First thing I did when I got home, I got very upset with those little tiny round mirrors. So I got home and I went to my bits box in there and I found the XV650's rear view mirrors that I kept. Uh, and I looked at them and I said, they're the same size. So I just undid the ones that were on there, bolted them on, they're great. <laughs> 
I'm going to dump those catalytic exhaust units. The main pipes can stay because I don't need, I don't want a lot of performance from it. I just want it to, you know, to ride around and go on the, the runs with Ulysses and that, um, you know, because I joined the Ulysses group up here. They ride every Sunday, <laughs> and I do mean every Sunday, rain, hail, snow, shine. <laughs> I just, you yeah, know, something, as I said, a simple bike. I want to go back to something simple. I've had all this, you know, damn wanfangled stuff. Admittedly, I'd like it a lot better if it had just straight carburetors on it. But I can see the advantage of the fuel injection on it. And I can understand that. I like it all around out here. There's very little traffic and most of the roads are pretty good. I still go up to Mount Panorama. Oh dear, my angel show. Uh, I, I would like to get my hands back on my ES2 Norton. I know who had, has that and uh, <laughs> he doesn't want to sell it. <laughs> it was the feather bed frame ES2, the wide line feather bed frame. And it was just a really nice, comfortable bike. You sat on it and you rode it. And uh, the only thing I would ever change on it was the Kickstarter. That's all, because the Kickstart is a fixed Kickstart and you can't twist it out of the way. And that, uh, I looked it up and uh, yeah, I've even got a fix for that now. I was a police officer. I worked on the North Shore for a fair while. Um, and unfortunately attended my fair share of accidents. It's uh, the thing that I find with a lot of them, they all get a little bit overconfident and they don't leave enough braking room and they either end up the backside of somebody or going around to the side of them, losing it and ending up under somebody. Leave yourself plenty of braking room and don't get overconfident. <laughs> because it's too easy to go, oh, I'm in trouble, and go bang, grab a handful of brake, and then just go down. Out here, it's just kangaroos, wombats, and koalas. Although the wombats aren't very soft when you hit them. <laughs> That's my second set of floorboards on that thing. I hit a wombat with it with the floorboard. He was fine. He was cranky. I stuffed the floorboard, yeah. I just find it so easy, and it's, it's something I, I like doing. I just, yeah, I like to get out on the bike and go. It's nothing in particular, it's just something I do. And out of all the years I've ridden, I've only ever broken one bone, and it's the big toe. <laughs> no, that was helping Dad with an aerial square four, putting it on the trailer. It came off the ramp, went down on my foot, because of my foot resting on the ramp, went down on my foot with the frame and bang, broke my toe. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button, and if you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching, and remember, you can't buy happiness, but you can ride a motorcycle, and that's kind of the same thing.